Athletes and judges, our final event for the day is gonna be a spicy couplet of rowing and thrusters. Um, so for event four, athlete one can start out on that rower, okay? This is gonna be a waterfall style type event. So at the call of go, um, understand he can't be touching that handle, but can be strapped in and seated, okay? So at the call of go, he can then grab the handle and start his rowing. Um, going to row whatever distance it is for your division. Obviously, it's different for the, the intermediate and the scale divisions and the men's and women's divisions. So check the granitegames.com for official distances, okay? As soon as he finishes, he'll get off that rower and advance to his barbell, facing his teammates. Yep, thanks Shane. And then he will begin those thrusters. As soon as he gets off that rower, athlete two can actually strap into the rower and start their row. Now, both athletes and judges, note that their monitor um, will be set up in interval mode, so do not touch the monitor at all. As soon as you hit your given distance, it'll reset to zero meters for that next athlete to start their distance, right? So don't touch the monitor, just leave it as is, and it will operate as it should, okay? So Jared's now doing his row while Shane is doing his thrusters, right? As soon as Shane finishes, he can come back to this box, okay? Now say that Jared, he's still rowing, awesome. He just finished up. He'll advance to his thrusters, all right? And then I'll step, sit on, I'll go ahead and start my row. All right? Now say that I just finished my row and Jared still has a few thrusters to go. I have to stay strapped in and seated on my rower until he finishes that last rep and has returned to the box. So say he just finished and I've just been hanging out here Awesome, now I can unstrap, get out, advance to the barbell, and start my work, okay? Now for this, it's three rounds for each athlete. So let's say that those two have already finished their three rounds. I'm the last working athlete. As soon as I finish my 15th rep, time is called for me, okay? Um, the other option too is that, say we hit that 10 minute time cap and I'm still working through some thrusters. In that case, it's total reps. Understand your score, is just total reps of thrusters. Think of that row as a buy-in for each and every time. So your score is either gonna be reflected in the total time for three rounds for each athlete, or the total number of thruster reps from all three of those teammates at that 10 minute time cap. Now for specific division standards, as far as the distances and the row, or, or the weight on the thrusters and the movement standards, just hang tight and we'll show you those next. For the row, the athlete may begin the workout seated and strapped into the rower's foot pedals, but may not grab the handle until the call of go. The athlete must remain on the rower until the display reads the designated number of meters. Coasting over the required work is allowed. However, the athlete cannot make an attempt to get off the rower, such as unstrapping their feet or standing up until the display reaches the designated number of meters. The monitor will be set to interval mode, this means that whenever the distance is accomplished, it will automatically reset to zero. Athletes are not permitted to touch the monitor. For the thruster, this is a standard barbell thruster in which the barbell moves from the bottom of a front squat to full lockout overhead. The barbell starts on the ground and no racks are allowed. The hip crease must clearly pass below the top of the knee in the bottom position. A full squat clean into the thruster is allowed when the bar is taken from the floor. If the barbell is dropped from overhead, it must settle on the ground before the athlete picks it up for the next repetition. The rep is credited when the barbell is locked out overhead with the hips, knees, and arms fully extended and the bar directly over the middle of the athlete's body. 